What to have with fish and chips? Gravy and mushy peas? Scraps? Curry sauce? How about a play? I was a herring girl back in the 1900s. I used to follow the fleet all the way from Shetland to Yarmouth. The Micron Theatre Company are touring the country until the end of October with one of each, which charts the history of fish and chips and its place in national life. And they are performing the piece in places where the dish is served. Micron tours by van and by narrowboat, so we don't have a lot of set. We're not able to have a lot of set, but when you're in a fish and chip shop, you don't need set. You know, you've got the smell, the aromas of fish and chips coming out, and people are, people are able to experience what we're describing, what we're celebrating. Once upon a time, it was roast beef and Yorkshire pudding. Now it's fish and chips, Britain's new national dish. Between the wars, Britain had a peak of 35,000 fish and chip shops. Well, there wasn't anything else, was there? It's the original. Churchill called them the good companions. We didn't have all the fancy foods that came over from America, did we? And in the 1930s, this was the biggest fish and chip shop in the world. Which is why it was chosen for tonight's sold out premiere of one of each. In the interval, the whole audience will be served a portion of fish and chips. And the cast are worried that by the end of the tour, this could be problematic. I think when you're watching a play about fish and chips and you've just had that, even if you haven't eaten it, I think you probably would go home and get some on the way. <laughs> on the way home. Yeah, it's lovely. And we get to eat quite a bit of it as well, so we just have to watch the waistline. A little bit! While the actors may get sick of fish and chips, history's shown the country never has. <laughs>